Hello and welcome. In this video, let's cover raster versus vector images, resolution, and document color modes. So what is image resolution? Well, pixels are the building blocks of images. So speaking of pixels, let's look at raster images. Raster images are most often photographs and are resolution dependent. So the number of pixels that make up an image for instance, pixels per inch or pixels per unit determines the quality of the image. So higher resolution images are going to have more detail than a low image resolution. So for instance, if we're placing a two inch sized image and it's a 80 kilobyte file, which is really tiny, it's not going to print at a very good resolution. It's going to be blurry. So let's take a look at the close-up of this photograph of this magnolia. You can see that the image quality here is pretty low. And as we enlarge it, we can see the individual colors, those blocks, those pixels, which make up the image. So this image is not going to be able to be enlarged and retain the quality. Vector, on the other hand, is made up of points, lines, curves, and shapes that are mathematical. So this little object here is vector, and I can scale that to the size of the earth, and it's going to still look like that. It's going to be great quality. This is actually a placed image, but it's showing the paths and points, which would be scalable. So this can be scaled the size of a grain of salt or very large, and those shapes are still going to be very crisp and detailed without seeing any blurring. So that's why we design logos and vectors, so we can scale these and they're not going to look blurry, whether it's used on printed on a, an ink pen or placed on a billboard. Try not to confuse photorealism with raster photos because there are some really talented artists who work in Illustrator and create incredible detail that looks realistic, and I'm sure that is very time consuming. But this tomato, for instance, can be scaled very large, like a wall graphic, and it's going to look really photorealistic. So talking about print resolution, if we're printing something that you'll hold in your hand, like a magazine, business card, flyer, brochure, this print collateral, you're going to want to have 300 dots per inch, 300 DPI. And that's going to visually hold enough detail that it looks sharp. If you're working with billboards or trade show booth graphics, these are scaled much larger and printers will often request 100 or 150 dots per inch. And part of that is because these are viewed further away than something in your hand. And also the larger the graphics, especially working with photographs, the file size is going to become astronomical. So you really don't want to be working with a two gigabyte file. You're going to have to worry a lot more about your processor power on your computer and graphics card. As we talked about with vector, that's mathematical, and that's going to reduce the file size tremendously. So you could have a giant logo banner, and it could still be under one megabyte because those paths are mathematical. It's working in numbers versus holding color in pixels. Digital screens are 72 PPI, which is pixels per inch. So if you are saving out graphics for digital banners or websites, you're going to want that to be RGB and 72 PPI, which is going to be vivid, and that's going to have enough detail for screen viewing. That's enough detail that our eye reads it with quality. Next, let's talk about document color modes. There are two primary document color modes, which is RGB and CMYK. Whenever you're setting up a new file, you can select the color mode here in the right panel. And you can see that naturally for print, it's giving CMYK. If we click on a web preset, it changes the color mode to RGB. If you've already created your document, you can go to File, document color mode and edit that here. So what is RGB and CMYK? 
RGB is red, green, and blue, and those are the colors that make up screen resolution on computers, tablets, mobile devices, and RGB is additive. So think of a prism. When the sunlight hits it, it is reflected into the rainbow. So these colors, when combined, create white because there is light coming through the screen. So RGB is appropriate for screen graphics, digital media, such as websites or projections. CMYK is subtractive. So think of the physicality of when you're painting or you're overlapping physical colors. The more colors you mix, the muddier the color gets. If you think of, if you have an inkjet printer or toner cartridges, you're going to notice that those inks or toner powders come in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If a printer is using color separations, that's going to help them in the print process to achieve an accurate display of the graphic. Grayscale is another option in Illustrator, and I basically never use this. Usually if I'm working in grayscale, it will be for a photograph, but it is possible to convert your designs to black and white if maybe you're sending it to a newspaper and you want to check the quality or what that colored image is going to translate into black and white. So you can select any of your artwork and go to edit, edit colors, convert to grayscale, and it is that easy. Lastly, I do want to mention Adobe Color. Whenever you're creating mood boards, or maybe you need inspiration for color themes, different color palettes. Maybe you want to create a natural color palette without having to sample and create your own. You can go to Adobe Color and you can play around with these different colors. So you can select and move these little circles. You can apply different color harmonies. And it's really cool because you can extract themes. So if you have an image, so if I drop in an example image in here, you can see it's extracted the main theme colors, which is pretty cool. And then you can play around with the color modes. So that's much easier than me trying to come up with and sample different colors that work well together. And it gives us the hexadecimal value, so which is great if you're coding, creating CSS for the brand colors. You can also save out those themes and then use them in your color libraries for any of the Adobe Creative Suite applications, such as Illustrator and Photoshop primarily. So I hope this video helped you better understand raster and vector images, resolution, and document color modes. Thanks for watching.